Hey, what do you say, guys? Paul from Cleveland back with you. This is going to be an all hands video. I'm going to talk a little bit about picking locks. Uh, I had a subscriber ask me not very long ago why it was that I took all of my um, uh, urban survival videos down, and it wasn't for any particular reason other than I really didn't feel like I had much more to say on the subject. You know, survival is one of those things you're either doing it and living the lifestyle or you're not. There's there's only so much to really talk about when it comes to um, survival and prepping and so forth. And I really kind of felt like I had said all there was for me to say. But there was one more thing and that's um, uh, skill development. And I think that you know, personally, my own opinion is that developing new skills is as important for survival as, you know, storing food or water or anything else. Learning how to do things, I think, is very, very critical. One of the th uh, skills that I always thought would be really helpful for a survivalist is lock picking. And so I've been watching some videos and um, thinking about, you know, maybe trying to make some lock picking tools and so forth and then um, about a week ago I had to pick this lock this was on a uh, um, recycle container and I needed to dump a whole bin of paper for recycling and I didn't want to spend you know 15 minutes shoving it all through the little slot on the top of the recycle container and I thought well if I could just pick the lock take the lock off I could you know lift the lid on the recycle container and dump the whole thing in so I thought well perfect time to utilize some of the information that I've learned about picking locks from the various uh, websites and uh, YouTube channels that I've been watching and so forth so what I did was I took a, one of the old uh, spatulas that we had here at work and this is this is a sample spatula you know you just you know this I this has got a 90 degree bend in it but these are supposed to be straight you know and it's just for like you know sampling little bits of powder and so forth and I just you know rifled through the drawer found like the oldest cruddiest one I could find and just bent it and made a uh, tension bar out of it and then for a pick I just used a uh, uh, yeah paper clip just put a little bend in the end of it and uh, there you have it so let's give this a try I'm gonna stick my neck out here and see if I can uh, do this again when I picked this thing the first time it was actually on the uh, recycle container I think I mentioned that and it the whole thing took me about two minutes to pick and it like I say it went real real quick now watch me not be able to do this now that I have this on camera all right, it's a four-pin lock. Uh, I believe it's a master, just based on the. All right, now any other time this would go without any trouble at all. <laughs> I sat here and picked this lock about four times with this. Uh... All right, let's try our starter over again here. pick this thing I'm not so much I think doing single pin picking with this is I am really just rocking it I think you know I wanted to believe that I was single pin picking but I think the way this is going in there all I'm doing is I'm just just rocking the pins back and forth and of course it's not going to work so let me exaggerate the rocking and maybe I can get it to work you know just put the pin pick in and then just you know you're rock it just just do this number you rock it back and forth there's a false set rock it some more there it goes so I thought originally I was single pin picking but I, I really think I was just rocking was all I was doing um, let's try that again you know just put the uh, Put the pick down in and just kind of work my way down through the pick, through the pin stack there. Okay, I think I'm at the bottom. All right. Just keep coming, coming up through the stack here. And of course, it's not going to want to work again. So, what I'm going to do is I'll do that rocking technique again. 
Just put it in there. And just start rocking it. Just and there it goes. So, you know, after I had done that and was able to get this off and picked it a few times, I thought, why not uh, start making a uh, set of lockpick tools? And I'm going to zoom the camera out just a hair here. Let's see. There we go. And so this is my uh, this is my basic kit that I've been working on. Um, like I said, this tension tool was made out of a uh, sample spatula. I made some more tension bars or tension tools out of the steel strips from old um, wiper blades. Uh, this was a, something that I saw uh, watching the Lock Lab videos from Bosni and Bill, and he recommended making tension bars out of those, uh, you know, the, the steel that's in the uh, automotive wiper blades. So I dropped by a local AutoZone and rifled through their trash cans, found about four or five old wiper blades, stripped the steel out of them, and made um, a number of tension tools. Let's see here. So I made um, two, I had several thicknesses of uh, uh, steel stock I was able to recover from those uh, blades and so I made two you know fairly thick ones I don't have my calipers with me so I can't tell you exactly how thick that is then I made an identical set um, a little bit uh, out of a little bit thinner material and all I did was just cut it to length you know clean the burrs off of it and then I just mounted it in my vise you know put the bend in mounted it in my vise and then just twisted it around and got that uh, you know flat surface so you could put your finger on then I made a real small real thin one um, forever you know possibly doing thin locks or thin keyways or something and of course I still have the one you know that I made the first time around so then I thought well why not you know get started on making some picks as well and some of the first pick that I made was this one that is a um, you know, my equivalent of a medium hook. I'll put that there. And then I have, a, you know, sort of my equivalent of a deep hook. Uh, half diamond. And the, uh, the DeForest diamond. I have a um, kind of a bad version of an L rake or a city rake. This was this was my first attempt to make one of these. I may try again. This one turned out. Yeah, I mean, it turned out okay, but it's not great. Then I have you know kind of like a bad uh, triple peak or a worm. This was I was my attempt at making a Bogota um, pick, and it really just wasn't turning out. So I rounded it off and made it more of like a you know rounded triple peak or a worm type pick. And then I have a, a straight probe. For you know bypassing locks then I threw in just you know just a piece of that strip material the real thin strip material more or less a uh, you know should I ever need to make something improvise a tool of some sort I could just have some stock to do that with then the last thing that I made I'm gonna have to dump it out here is I did a very crude uh, uh, top of the keyway bar and that's for you know, mounting in the uh, top of the lock and tensioning from the top of the keyway that way. So, I thought maybe I'd just demonstrate a few of these and uh, show you this is a really, really, at least as far as these simple, you know, padlocks go, this is a very, very easy skill to catch on real quick. But I will give you right now two very good points that I had to learn and kind of learn the hard way is that you can overthink this process. Um, when I first uh, picked this lock with the paper clip, you know, I was really just, you know, just getting in there and just doing real simple, you know, rocking of the pins. Nothing real fancy, just, you know, just rocking. Well, then when I, you know, had my little medium pick and I really got in there and started going to town, unbeknownst to me what I was doing is I was oversetting all the pins, you know, because I was really getting in there and I was shoving those pins way up in there, and I had a, I had to really, you know, kind of develop my feel for these pins, you know, and back off a lot, you know, the aggressiveness, 
you know, and just kind of develop a real light touch to get in there and just press those pins up just enough without trying to shove them out through the top of the lock. Uh, another thing that I have learned that I'll share with you is that the right tension tool makes all the difference. And this is something that I'm just learning, but I'll demonstrate, I'll take my old tension tool. And the thing of it is, when I made this, my first tension bar, I just happened to make a bar that works really well in this lock. And I'll demonstrate that. So I put it in like so. Let's try, uh, let's try this uh, you know, triple peak or worm or whatever you want to call this thing. So you just put it in there. Just rake a few. There it goes. That's all it takes. Matter of fact, I'll sh just to show that's not a fluke, although it probably was, let's try it again. Just put it in there. And there you have it. But now watch what happens when I take this tension bar, set it aside, and try this one. Now look at these. Yes, it is. this one is a little shorter on the end than this one, but you notice the width of these is not that much different. This one is only slightly bigger. But watch what happens. Lock it up. We'll put this tool down in, and, you, and it's noticeably a little bit tighter than that other one. But when I take my you know, little triple peak here and start down in there, Nothing. I get nothing. No movement, no false set. Now, if, for those of you unfamiliar with lock picking, the term false set means as you get some of the pins into the right location, the core of the lock will begin to turn. And so once you get a, you know, you notice, you know, it starts to turn, that's called a false set. That tells you you've got at least one or more pins set in the right location. You just need to keep, you know, working with the other pins. Usually the ones that are loose are the ones that you still need to set. But you can see here, I'm working and working and working and working this, and it's just not giving me anything because that, that tool, that tension bar, is just slightly too big. And that's why I say when I made this bar, I just, through happenstance, just happened to make the, the exact right size bar that I needed. Because again, pop that bad boy in there, get that triple peak what I do with him, there he is. And that's all it takes. So let's try, uh, try something else here. Let's try, uh, let's try our city rake. Put my bar in. Now, you're supposed to, uh, there's, there's several techniques that I'm learning for picking locks. Uh, there's single pin picking, which I'll talk about in a little bit, which I've, I've, I've already mentioned. But then there's, you know, there's zipping, where you just put a pick in and zip it out. And then there's raking, where you're just, you know, you're just, oh, hey, got it. Where you're just, you know, just putting in and just, you know, raking the pick, you know, across the pins. And then there's rocking, where you're just kind of getting in there and you're just dancing around with the uh, pick and just you know just kind of in and out raking around just trying to oh, there you go just trying to get all those pins set now granted this is only a four pin lock so it's pretty easy to do the other thing to do is uh, um yeah guys forgive me for a second i'm gonna take a quick drink <clears throat> it's dry in here i'm losing my voice let's uh let's talk about single pin picking uh, you take your, uh, in this case, let's take the, matter of, matter of fact, a pick that I've had a lot of luck with, single pin picking, this master lock, is the DeForest Diamond. And that's um, like a half triangle, slightly curved. And this one's actually, you know, giving me fairly good, fairly good results. Single pin picking is not easy. In fact, this is not even going to, it's not going to go any other time when I would do this off camera. There, there it is. Got it. So basically, you're just pushing the pin up 
to the shear line, moving that core around, and ultimately once you do that enough and work the pins enough, the whole thing will turn and unlock. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun, guys. I recommend uh, giving it a shot. Lock picking, a good skill to have. Now, let me say this: in a survival situation, are you going to want to pick a lock? More than likely not. If it's on a door, take a crowbar, rip it off the door. Uh, if you want access into a building and it's an emergency, don't pick the lock. Drive your car through the front door. But otherwise, yeah, there are going to be times when perhaps you know the more subtle art of lock picking might be something worthwhile to know. So, a lot of good uh, videos, a lot of good websites. I recommend the Lock Lab, Bosnian Bill. A lot of good videos, a lot of good information. Um, check it out. And I will talk to you guys later.